I guess, official makerspace type stuff. Um, right. But that's where I am. Great. Yeah. And I mean, I took away so many things from that visit last year with, um, you know, your giant compass making things with rigmajigs <laughs> and out on the yeah. lawn for doing math and, and my passion's integration. So um, it seems like you're going 100 miles an hour and you even did some rap this year, right? <laughs> right? If I'm I right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I call yeah. you here, Todd. <laughs> I lurk. So, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, how do you, as a librarian, I guess, so you've got this green screen room, you've got a passion, obviously, we'll talk about that, mm -hmm. but you've got a Lego wall and you've got these, you've got an army of Spheros and you have, you know, all these different things, VR and, and rigmajigs and kids building things here and there. How do you manage that in a makerspace? and check out books yeah that's a really good question um i don't really have the answer to that um no i i i think um i think you have to become comfortable with just being uncomfortable in the sense that things are not going to be um things are not going to be perfectly placed and you know organized all the time and empowering the kids to take a lot of that ownership i think is a big part of it and when you can when you can have kids assisting kids to me that's yeah. the ultimate so if you can teach um a small group of kids how to do a green screen project and then just kind of let it go yeah. and those kids kind of become the experts and by the time it comes back to you you know they've they've ramped up anything you kind of created or or kind of taught them in a whole new way so yeah. i guess wow. um you know most of the things that we do in our maker spaces are almost always literature based hmm. so if we're going to do some you know a a cardboard construction project for a three or four weeks, you know, we'll read, we'll read a book. It's not a box um, as a way to start. You know, we did a giant sewing unit last year that um, took, you know, it, bits and pieces we, we sewed all year, every grade level sewed. Um, but when we really dug in and did an apron project, you know, I found a book that connected to that. And so I'm always trying to work the literacy angle to just about any kind of making that we do. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess that's part of it. And then just really, you know, I think the library's mission is to get books into the kids' hands and to find what they're reading. And it really is a supply and demand type thing. And we're working really hard in our libraries to respond to what kids are reading. So, hmm. you know, it isn't, we don't really care so much about having books on the shelves. We want them in the hands. Yeah. And so we're, we're constantly adding new books. We're taking their suggestions. We're, um, where in some cases we have kids writing their own books and publishing books within our school. And, you know, we have one, one young lady who published a whole series that are still in our library. Wow. Uh, I say published, they're not professionally published. Yeah, yeah. still. Within our school. And, um, you know, she's still one of the, you know, most checked out books in our library right now. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, you know, our, our library, which you ha happen to be, to be part of, we call it the, the living room of our school. And so it's kind of that hub. It's kind of that beating heart of the school. And yeah. so as long as that energy is going there, um, you know, it might be more, um, it might be more literacy based at one point, and then it might take over when we did our opera project this, this last spring, you know, for, for two weeks, our library became the set design place where kids were working with our art teacher and our music teacher to produce their own lyrics and scripts and story and they were come to me and we were building the the set out of rigamajig and yeah. cardboard yeah so you know i think the whole school kind of thrives on that project-based energy that kind of pulses pulses and emanates from there yeah. so yeah and the staff too i mean i you guys you yeah. have a little charging station bar i'll mention that um yeah i, I, it's, I mean it's a beautiful idea i've, I've referenced it a lot i love what you've been doing out there, but that you can get staff to come in, right? And have coffee and charge. Is that kind of the, is that kind of part of that heartbeat of the school? That is definitely. So most, you know, like most schools, when our teachers come, when the kids, when teachers come with their kids to drop them off for, whether it be a, a makerspace time or a library time, more than, more, more likely than not, they're supposed to be in another meeting at that exact same time, just the way our the blocks are built yeah. but every once in a while you know they'll they'll come they'll be writing conference reports so they'll be um shooting emails back and forth to parents or their st their colleagues and if we can get them to just kind of rest for a minute charge up their devices and we have free coffee for them which is a you know a big a big a big a yeah. big draw yeah uh, free coffee and free power 
And if we can get them to kind of power themselves, power their mind and absorb some of the things that are going on in the space, we kind of call that osmotic collaboration. Uh, you know, it just kind of happens. Teachers hear like, hey, I heard you guys were doing storytelling with the kids in you know, the idea lab. Could we maybe tie that into our writer's workshop? Yeah. And as a great librarian, the answer is always yes and, you know, yeah, yes, yeah. we can do that. And we can maybe turn that into, you know, a filmmaking project or, uh, or whatever that is. So you're right. I love that. I love our power up bar, we call it. Yeah, power up bar. Yeah, I love that. And um, a little bit more about your school. You're not, what, what's your grade range? Because I remember it being a little different. Um, yeah, like it is. It's, uh, it's K4. K4. Uh, okay. And that is mostly due to population. So our population kind of ebbs and flows and mm -hmm. we have K4 elementary schools and then we have a five, six middle school and then a seven, eight mm -hmm. junior high school. But I just uh, wanted, I wanted really to, small district. Yeah. Well, but I wanted to point that out because I think a lot of the stuff you read in your book and that you, that you, you show online, if you follow Todd, um, you need to, if you don't already get on Twitter, follow Todd, but um, the, um, that this is done with the maximum age of a, of a 10 year old, right? Yeah, 10 years I mean, and under, yeah. Right. So this is, this is phenomenal stuff you're doing. So, um, you know, let's unpack some of that. What are, what are some of the things you've done last year? Um, you know, for people that are here looking into green screen stuff, what are, let's just dive into green screens for a little bit and then we kind of back back up and go big sure. picture again if we need to. So yeah, what are kind of your, your big takeaway? How's the book performing? And, um, and, you know, what are your big, your big sure, projects you're liking? Sure. Well, the, the book's doing really well. I mean, I think it's, you know, I think they always ebb and flow as things yeah. kind of go, but it's really done consistently well on Amazon and um, just having opportunities to get out and share it with people. I had my first official author signing. I saw at that. SD, and I, I mean, I've been an author for eight months, but it was the first time ever, like, having the chance to literally sign them for people. I said, I mean, I, I, you, if, it's funny. I don't have a single book in my house yeah. um, because I, you know, I get these boxes of them and as soon as they come in, I'm sending them out to people, you know, either yeah. whether they be giveaways or, you know, Oh, I know this teacher will love this and send it to her and for yeah. him. And, um, Do you so, sign them before you give yeah, them? I mean, mine, mine's not signed, Todd. I don't know. <laughs> she should have so driven up the road. I, I didn't got, know. You, you got one of the, you got one of the early ones that I came do. directly from the box. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think the, you know, it, that, that has just been so much fun. Um, and honestly, you know, as an, as an author, I, it, this was kind of interesting for me because I've written, I, I have now five manuscripts that are written that are um, narrative nonfiction. Hmm. Um, so it, it was a totally different type of book for me to write this book. And it was one of those things where, again, yes, I can do that. Uh, uh -huh, sure, I can do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make that happen. Um, and the good news is they actually, um, McGraw-Hill just contacted me about writing a second book. So we're oh, great. starting to, not necessarily, this. the next book is going to be more um, philosophical about immersion and integration across the disciplines, particularly the um, math, oh, excuse me, music and art. Um, okay. So I'm going to be working with some colleagues about designing projects that, you know, really immerse and there, there may be a green screen connection or not, but really it's the idea of collaborating across the disciplines. Yeah. Um, so so a lot of the stuff in the book, that, things that you had done, and then you just had to go redo in a lot of ways to get the pictures and to... Exactly, and yeah. And you're like, oh um, yeah, I've got that. And then it, the I got that actually took you another, you know, Yeah, a lot of the things... Hours. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, hundreds of hours, right? <laughs> to redo all those things. The, the, what I found was for this book um, that... I didn't, I, I really wanted to get away from what I call like the one and done kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, a, a lot of people's first initial experience with green screen is kind of like just like right behind me right now, like take a picture and put a new background in. And that's an awesome way to get started. And I think it kind of, it's the gateway to, you know, other creative stuff. Yeah. Um, but what I wanted the book to be was really a, um, so much more than that, I wanted it to be multiple layered mm -hmm. so that you might um, use green screen, but the, uh, the end result is maybe taking a, uh, you know, a simple image that you would do. So for example, one of the projects in there is a postcard project from an immigration study. Mm 
And it really incorporates two or three different apps. It incorporates many subject areas. So, you know, you could use something like Photomapo and pull in a grid coordinate from wherever these, it, these immigrants were coming to, to, the, to America. You could do a, a green screen background and insert them into either the country they were from or Ellis Island, wherever that might be. And then yeah. you can also tie that into, you know, a read, write, think activity where they actually write the postcard. Mm -hmm. uh, and so things like that, where it's like multiple levels and layers. So that really, if you did all 24 projects in the book, you would not only have some pretty good skills at the end, but the, and the intention is that you would see where that could step up to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of the projects in there are, um, are very practical. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard from teachers that um, for kids who are older than 10, they've just been able to hand them the book and say, oh, it's a project and try it and do it. Um, for kids who are under, you know, 10 and under, like the kids I work with, I usually just have those instructions either laminated on a table or I'll, I'll build a quick video how to, and kids are awesome with that. You know, you just yeah. show them the very basic thing and then they can go back and watch it again if they need to. And with a tool like Clips, that's really fun and easy for me to do right within that very simple um, that interface. Yeah. So I found that it's a, the book is a great way for people who might have tried green screen, but want to kind of push it to the next level. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, there are some things in there like the school district I just visited out in Colorado, um, Boulder, Boulder Valley School District, they all had Wii Video. And so I dug into Wii Video and, you know, the, many of the teachers didn't even realize that in Wii Video there are hundreds of thousands of, um, they've just upgraded where there are hundreds of thousands of royalty free stock footage built okay. into the program now. And in addition to just fantastic stock footage, there are hundreds of thousands of royalty free stock green screen. Oh. And so I could write a whole book about just using Wii Video green screen. Yeah. And, because there's so much rich content just already built right into the software. Yeah, what apps are you even... using the most right now? So, um, well, I kind of made it my mission this summer to learn Wii Video as best yeah. I could yeah. to teach folks there. Um, but the, the probably the simplest and easiest is an app called Do Ink Green Screen, hmm. and it's an iPad app. And one of the features of it that I like the best is if you put it up on, a, on an iPad stand or a tripod, Mm -hmm. You can use the front facing camera and have multiple layers. So sort of like in Photoshop, you can have um, the green screen layer, like right now where I am, that could be the middle layer. You could have an under layer that removes the green screen and puts me in a new place. And then you can have a third layer on top where you can add either extra video or special effects. Yeah. And it allows you to see it all in real time. So you're not yeah. so much filming it and then putting into a program pulling in those special effects. You can actually create it live. So I did some really fun things where I created a tutorial for my students on using the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. And I took a still frame of the sewing machine. And then I walked around in front of a green screen, jumping around and saying, here's the spindle. Oh, and here's- And you could actually top. see it at the same time. I could time. actually see it at the same time. And so I was made myself really tiny. And I walked around on top of the sewing machine, pointing out different things. And then, you know, if I needed to, I could cut and then put myself at the bottom of the sewing machine or wherever yeah. it was I needed to do. So just by, you know, two finger um, shrink that's and great. zoom, you can move yourself around oh, and then change cool. the perspective. So, yeah, that's you cool. can imagine I had their attention for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they were riveted. By wow. That. I want and, and to do a how-to video like that now. And then, of course, you know, there's always the... Uh, um, you know, I, I refer to it in the book as uh, the BFG project where, you know, you have the BFG holding his hand out. You put the kids in the BFG's hand, looking at them face to face. And yeah. I actually did that with kids this year. Once I taught them how to do that, they were actually filming themselves with their hands out like this and putting that in as the bottom layer and then filming themselves on their hands shrunk talking to themselves. Oh my. And so it's so it just, you know, again, it just, once you start digging in and experimenting, it's just on. Yeah. It's and so do you have like a couple pop-up green screens um, or do you have some, something painted on the wall or what's, I don't remember so, your setup so there. We, we, so right now, like the right behind me is just a piece of uh, fleece from the hobby store mm -hmm. or the, the fabric store. And as long as you have a greenish color, 
it doesn't have to be you know a set pantone color it, it, the, you get a more professional final look if you do use you know a darker green pantone and i don't remember the number but it's in the book sure um of the exact color but i have found that you don't need necessarily a pop up you don't need a even a wall painted green is fine, but I often think people kind of then get stuck. They think, oh gosh, we can only use the green screen wall. Mm. Well, throw your green screen on the ground and all of a sudden give, your kid, give a kid a skateboard and have them on the ground and they've, they create these, you know, gravity defying effects. So <laughs> green screen isn't just, you know, here and it's not even, you know, the $10,000 room with a cyclorama and everything. It just needs to be a green piece of fabric, paper, um, anything. Um, and so my big thing has been, yeah, we have two or three of these pop-ups that, you know, can be moved around anywhere. But the best thing is just going to your local fabric store, grabbing 12 yards, cut it in half, and sew one stitch, steam it. We have one of those screens in our library that is a power screen, so it goes up. Mm -hmm. We put it to that, and then we create a little um, round. Yeah, yeah. So then the kids can be, you can remove the floor, you can move the walls. We have kids lay down on a green pillow and they can do the Superman thing. Um, they can lay on the ground with, like I said, with a skateboard or a surfboard. And all of a sudden it looks like, you know, they're actually on top of the wave with these amazing, you know, um, perspectives. So yeah. I'm really more about getting a, almost a green screen in every kid's hands. Yeah. And, and that could be just something as simple as going to your local pizza store and grabbing those small pan pizzas where you can um, do small animations or get an extra large pizza box and you can pop it up behind you. One of my great, one of my friends, Jennifer Laban, uh -huh. um, she's in the book. She created this um, portable green screen, a wearable green yep, screen. Yep, yep. And, and she, she has it hooked, she hooks it here and she can, you know, she can hide the things, but, and she can walk around with her Chromebook and, and just be walking around filming herself against the green screen. So it's, it's <laughs> like a steady cam. It's like yeah. a steady cam green screen. So, yeah. uh, you know, I guess I'm more about as many types of green screens or as many ways to animate using green screen ideas um, as possible. So, so you, you've got a first, your first grader comes in the room. How do you get them mm -hmm. going into this? You know I mean? It seems like yeah, that's a yeah. lot, that's a lot of technology and, and you've got circ desks to run and power, power bar yeah. and all these other things. What, what do you kind of do to get that? So the, the best thing that we've been able to do is set up the green, set up the camera. Um, and we typically have either a projection system or we just recently got like a, a larger uh, flat screen on a stand that's mm -hmm. the best because you can put the flat screen in front of them so that they can see the 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 big screen okay yeah and then we put the um the ipad on a stand with the green screen behind them and we just drop in some kind of background okay. and then they can move and see themselves on the big screen and that's when the magic happens uh, you know then you can say okay well what where do you want to be and they'll say i want to be at the bottom of the ocean okay boom Here's how you drop the background in. Uh, and then, you know, then they'll start moving around with it. And then you can show them on Do Ink. Typically when you're filming, you, like right now, there's no way for me in this program to resize my video. But right. in Do Ink, I can use the two finger pinch. I could come up here, pinch myself. And instead of being, you know, most of the screen, I could become little teeny Todd right here in the corner. Wow. And the kids realize that pretty quickly. And then what I show them is if we record you as little teeny Todd here, then we can save that, put you in another layer, and then you can become giant Todd and hold your hand out and hold the little teeny Todd in your hand. And so that's where those sorts of things start happening. And then I just have a big old treasure box of green stuff. So I have a green head. I have a green sheet that becomes the invisibility cloak. <laughs> um, I have those morph suits. The kids love trying yeah, on those yeah. morph suits and then just walking around being completely invisible. Um, we have a lot of just, we, the dollar store is a great place to go because you can get like the gardening gloves that are yeah. green. Yep, yep, and I saw those. For those, you, you can stick that over the camera and your hand is invisible, but you can have this tube of, tube of paint. Can you tell I'm in my workshop right now? I've got all my yeah. paints and paint. Yeah. And you can make this tube of green paint 
move or float because your hand is invisible. Yeah. Green screen. Yeah. So that's kind of how I get started with them. And then they just, they, it, it's not a great idea to do that with like 25 kids. Right. Because it just becomes crazy. They, they, they yeah. just get so excited and it just becomes, it's like unleashing a, uh, you know, a boatload of fireworks on. Fourth yeah, right, right. I want to light a few off at a time. So right. I typically turn the screen so that only the kids that are on this side of the room. Oh, yeah. right, right. It very quickly becomes the thing where everyone's coming over. So Everybody that's how I start is just with small groups with, um, the, you know, being able to see the screen and be able to kind of explore with it a little bit. That's great. That's great. Wow. And so, and is your, is your library time a specials time or is this integrated that you, you bring teachers in and they stay there and kind of help out or how's that go between the classroom and the makerspace? So I kind of alluded to this earlier. Ours is, is a, the way our schedule is it's um, I, I'm fixed. So um, the kids come to me and they're there for me for two, I, for two blocks of time. I have a okay. 30 minute window for library and then I have an hour window for makerspace. Nice. And it's, it's, it's good because I see everybody. Mm -hmm. But the ideal is, and this is what we hope to move more to, is that those schedules would be flexible mm -hmm. so that kids could come in every day for a week if they were building a project. Or, right. um, but, but, you know, we're getting there. It's kind of yeah. like stage two. Yeah. Um, and so typically when our kids are in the space with us, their teachers are, are linked up with another class in a meeting, like mm -hmm. another grade level okay. right. team meeting. Some sort. Oh, I see, I see. So the teachers are not able usually to hang out and yeah. be part of it. Um, right. So in order to communicate, we use Seesaw um, yep. in our school. Yep. I remember that. We'll save those projects in Seesaw. We try to we try to get to what we call our team meetings um, at least a couple of times a month and, and find how we can dovetail what's happening within the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, teachers, the classroom teachers often will hear, like you said, at the power up bar. Well, yeah. Here, I heard you were doing storytelling. Can we can we dovetail that with okay. our storytelling unit and you know a good librarian? Yes, and yes, and <laughs> absolutely yes. Yeah, that's great. Um, somebody's asking here. Uh, great session it says uh, I've used two camera layers to create twins, kids and adults. So that's yeah, it. that's my friend Clement. I think from. Yeah. Are you still in Switzerland, Clement? I don't know if he can answer or not, but can, I think he was in it. Geneva somewhere oh, for the last bit. Nice, yeah. nice. And his yes. school is green. So he did this awesome thing. His school is painted green. And he did this awesome green screen thing with his school around the oh, holidays. Wow, that's really great. Cool. That's great. So talk a little bit about um, Legos and green screen, because you got you have a project yes. in here. And I love love Legos. and. And I, I still need to get the Pantone color so that I can make my own, you know, <laughs> semi, you know, retentive, you know. I can share. I can share. Obsessive compulsive. Yeah, yeah, I might. I might. Colors. Um, so I discovered almost by accident that the green base plates for Lego mm. are, can actually have the, can actually work as a green screen. So if you set up um, Lego base plates, you can move your characters and, and um, they'll, they'll, they'll adhere to the Lego base plate. So you can do some pretty amazing stop motion using Lego or particularly Lego minifigures. Mm -hmm. um, I have a bit of an obsession with Lego minifigures. <laughs> and so we have a huge collection of them at our school and we have them in these, uh, you know, nice the Lego place. minifigure yeah. boxes and stuff. Yeah. And this is brilliant. I didn't, I can't claim this, but um, a friend of mine taught me the shoe for a figure. So if kids want to use a minifigure in their <laughs> creations, they give us a shoe and we put it on top of the shelf. And then at the end of the class, when they line up, if a kid is missing a shoe, <laughs> their ticket to leave is their minifigure in my that's hand. That's great. I love uh, it. So that helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. What's, really, what's really cool is you can use those minifigures on the actual brick studs to move, make them anchor. But my favorite is if you take a book stand and you know, a book stand typically has the, the, the vertical and then also a horizontal. If you take and just use a little bit of um, duct tape on the back, you can adhere a Lego base plate to that. So you have a, a strong vertical. Right. And then you do the same with the bottom. And then what we've done is we've added a third so that you really have like a third dimension. Yeah. 
so that you you can build in all three dimensions. This corner shot, then. Yeah, exactly, a corner shot, and and you can also you know the, the many um, base plates come in blue as well, and green screen doesn't have to be green. Um, it just so happens that green is the color that is not in most of our skin, right? Uh, unless you're Kermit the Frog, um, but. You can do blue. In fact, in movies, they typically do blue for night shots because they don't want the green to fade mm -hmm. up it or to uh, spill out onto the actors if it's mm -hmm. a if it's a dark, darkly lit scene. Oh, interesting. So you can use any color Lego base plate really to do that. That's great. And do you have a favorite stop motion uh, app that you've been using? Absolutely. My favorite is Boink's I Stop Motion. Yeah, and it's a little expensive. I, I, it's not terribly expensive. I think it may be like four dollars, five dollars, um, and then they give you a discount if you purchase multiple for a school. But what I love about it best is it has something called the onion skin, and if you can kind of imagine sort of the tech, the style of what's happening in a stop motion, is imagine if you draw a frame and then you slid another piece of paper over top of it. You can still just sort of see the outline mm -hmm. from underneath. Um, Boink size stop motion allows you to see the previous frame of the animation. Oh, perfect. So you, if you bump the camera, for example, which is a very common thing, the right. kids can move the camera back and get it lined up just right. Oh, perfect. Um, or, if, or if you're working with Lego and the guy falls over. Right. Set him back up just right, move his arm just to where, where it is. So I have used that with as young as kindergarten. Wow. And the kids... This is the thing. I mean, you know, as I'm, I'm moving, this will be my 26th year in education. And the thing I've learned the most is that kids can do way more than we ever expected. Yeah. Yep. And, and last year, I have to admit, I, um, I did not, I was a little nervous about doing stop motion with my kindergartners and first graders. It wasn't that I didn't think that they could do it, but I thought they would struggle with sort of the keeping, keeping things in anchored. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the issues when you're doing stop motion is you want to try to keep your camera steady so that your shot looks fluid. Right. And the simple solution is just to tape, tape the iPad to the table or tape the mm -hmm. tripod and tape all of your other things so that it helps them be successful. Right. And once we did that, they produced stop motion animation that was as good or better than most of my third and fourth graders. Wow. Um, wow. So I've, I've shared some things on Twitter, like our um, rainbow trout life cycle videos, yep. they, which, which, which just blow yeah. me away. I know. I mean, just, just tremendous. Yeah. So that's my lesson from last year is, huh. you know, don't, don't, um, don't count them out. Give them a yeah. chance. So, yeah. Find ways to, to kind of help them succeed. Yeah. Make, yeah. yeah. You know, kind of, shore them up a little bit yeah it easier for them to be successful that's great that's great um so i saw you so we'll do a little more green screen here if we have time but i've been trying to keep mm -hmm. them to around 40 minutes or so just so people are watching but um so what are you know you did some rigmajig um article or was it um was it something at iste i saw i saw a bunch yeah, of so, did something. so i you know rigmajig is a great company i don't they're they're a nonprofit, so they're not going to be out there pushing their stuff. And yeah. the company that sells them is Kaboom. Is there the sort of their company okay. that does the selling for them? Um, and they've just recently become available on pro platforms like Dimco and mm -hmm. Teacher Supply Store and things like that. So yeah. they're getting to be more of a. It, it's easier for teachers to get. They can now do it on Donors Choose. Oh, okay. Like that. Um, yeah, because they are I'm, kind of spendy. They're big. I mean, they're basically. If, if you don't know about them, they're big wooden pieces that yeah. have uh, they're just I don't know holes and pegs, right? They're like a giant wooden erector set. Yeah. Um, I mean, these pieces and, are what, three to four feet long, some of them? or Yeah. I mean, some of them are, are easily four feet long and mm -hmm. everything is connected with a thumb tightened wing nut and screw. And it's just, it's one of my absolute favorite building tools. And every year now for four years that we've had our makerspace, we do a survey of the kids and every year their number one um, their number one favorite tool, and, it, and like you said, Mark, we have so many things. You would think they would say the drone or the right. hero or whatever it is, is rigamajig. Really? And even our biggest kids say that they can build something big yeah. quickly. Yep. So they can build a house. I mean, they can literally build a house in an hour. And, yeah. and like a house you can like live in. Yeah. A little tiny house. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I've recently done um, just, I, you know, I, I did an article for them 
um, about their new Simple Machines add-on kit. Mm. Um, and I've done some work for them through Dimco, just kind of talking about some of the projects that I've done. And almost mm -hmm. again, this idea that um, kind of like once you teach them the basics, you yeah. know, then the kids start thinking in terms of, oh, that's just a building tool, kind of like blocks, like we had when we were little. Mm -hmm. so, when we started our opera last spring, the kids came to me and said, can we build a, the set out of Rigamajig? I was like, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely we can. And we had just finished studying automata. So we did some yeah. simple um, cardboard and um, wooden block art automata. And so they actually decided that they were going to make the set pieces move. And so yeah. I posted on Twitter of like the ship that moves. And so there's a kid in the back, you know, nice. pushing a lever to make the ship move. And it's, yeah. it's cardboard and rigamajig all built together that kind of moves together. Oh, so interesting. To, me, to me, that's, that's the best, right? You could almost make that type of little thing that they could sit on behind a green screen, right? And make a Absolutely. little ocean yeah. moving. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, we ended up having a, a ship that moved. We had waves. We had a, uh, a lighthouse that kids cranked. They used the simple machines to create a gear system. Uh, nice. They did that. They built a Statue of Liberty out of it. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. this is great. Wow. So um, I had a couple questions that I wanted to pull up here that people have asked different times. Um, you know, kind of where do you see, so I, I get this a lot from, um, from different people saying, hey, this is just, okay, yeah, you're, you're, you're having fun, you're playing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I can, I mean, just from what you're saying right there, I can already say, oh, they learned simple machines, they learned gear ratios, mm -hmm. they learned what the different, what a pulley is, what, you know, what a lever yes. is, and they understand it in, in more detail than just learning a term. But, um, you know, how do you kind of debunk that? Or when people ask you and they say, so is this just a fad? You know, mm. what, how do you answer that? And, and kind of what's well, the rationale to pull them towards, no, this isn't. You know. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I think the projects I've mentioned speak of them, for themselves. You know, when you talk about um, kids moving beyond just a, a simple, you know, project that extends a book, you know, you re read the three um, the three billy goats gruff and they build a bridge. Well, that's really cool. But I mean, let's take that to the next level, you know, and let's have them build a house, you know, out of rigamajig and study some of the, you know, study some of the concepts that we worked through. We really, I think the, the key to this is Mark talking about the, um, the, the design process, yep. you know, if it's a one and done thing, I think it has some value, but I think the, where there's real value is, Okay, so you built this first house. Let's take let's take a photo of it. Let's reflect on it. What worked really well? What didn't work really well? Okay, next week we're going to try this again, but we're going to use what we learned today to make this house even better. What would we do to make it better the next time? You know, maybe we would add cardboard, or maybe we would um, try making a stronger base, or maybe we would need to um, integrate some other system into this. Right. So you know, I think almost everything in our, our in our curriculum starts with some sort of challenge, you know, whether it be um, some of the more formulaic things like one of our experiences is we put a giant zip line in the library and I wish kids could fly on it. Ah, oh, be so nice. But they, that would be really cool. But, you know, we, so we build a zip line and then kids use rigamajig to design a shuttle to take this character from point to point and we time it. And we work about, we look at efficiency, we look at, you know, safety of the, of the passenger. And, right. You know, over the course of giving kids, you know, sort of the process where we sit down and have them brainstorm what might work, what do you think might, you know, how, what, what materials do you think you might use? And then iterate through that and then, right. you know, actually try it and then go back to the drawing board, as they say, yeah. and try it again. To yeah. me, that's where the real learning is going to happen. And mm -hmm. it, it requires time. You know, it does require time. It requires um, a, a, a bit of flexibility. I mean, you have to be able to say, okay, so, you know, you want to make this thing light up. All right. Well, so if, it, if he's successful, you want it to light up. Okay. So I haven't taught you about makey makey yet, but that would probably be a great way to build a very simple system that would light this guy up. Hmm. So sometimes it means, you know, you might not have thought you were going to teach makey makey for another six weeks, but right. this right. would be a great time to teach makey makey or, right. This year we're exploring kind of that idea of the zip line, but instead of doing it with rigamajig, we're looking at uh, doing it with Lego. 
and incorporating some of the, the we do 2.0. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Which integrates with scratch, I think. And exactly. So instead of just having a simple, you know, uh, you know, using a pulley to go down from, from A to B, it might be going from A to B, but it has to do something else yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, and, and letting kids' imaginations kind of fly from there. Yeah, that's great. So speaking of materials, I've been, I've been doing kind of a, to end it up, a little hot seat thing, you know, from, uh, okay. you know, ESPN style here. Um, <laughs> so, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions and you just okay. get it. Okay, so I've got my Amazon account open. I have $300 and I'm buying you stuff. What are you buying for next year? What I want or what I would buy what, for us? What for would you buy? For, yeah, no, I'm not buying you presents, Todd. No, no, oh, for, for, your, okay. for, your, for your school. Right? <laughs> oh, I, I would say that, you know, most important thing is to get the, uh, the uh, I think they're called Pelican pelican cutters, mm -hmm. the saw cutters. The, um, forget the name again, but they look like the scissors that they use for, like the athletic trainers. Use yeah, them. yeah, they're like paramedic scissors. The yeah, scissors, those. Uh, orange handled uh, or blue handled uh, something. Blue -handled, yeah. Jason talked about them yesterday too, yeah. Yeah, those, I'd get those two things I would get. Um, I just learned about this. There's actually cardboard tape. Cardboard so it's, tape? It's tape that, it, it's, it's not made of cardboard, but it looks yeah. like Yeah, 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 no, it's not shipping. Boxes, it's a special mm -hmm. shipping type thing. And you can use that in a way to like hinge things and to, oh. um, to seam. Like if you've got a big, three or four big pieces of cardboard and you want to seam it, yeah. you can use that as, a, okay. as like a, almost like a flawless seam. Nice. So that would be a big one. I would spend some money on make do. Um, which are the cardboard rivets that you can yep. do. Yep. Uh, and them. then there are a couple other like McGillicuddy's or some other version of them that are not make do that has some hinges. Oh. Right? Really cool. That would get that. Okay. Um, and then 15 rolls of duct tape. There you go. All right. Great. <laughs> Good. Nice. Um, next one. Favorite project that you're so excited about for the coming year? So the thing I'm most excited about this year is we are starting a student voice film fest in our school district. And we're going to be um, highlighting specifically the kindergarten um, through eighth grade, but we're really focusing on the younger kids. And so it's going to be a film fest around the theme of kindness, and kids are going to be creating um, original films around a theme of kindness that are no more than two minutes long, and they have to be completely original. So any film, any, excuse me, any, any soundtracks, anything like that has to be completely composed by the kids. And it's something that I'm excited that our, all three of our elementary schools are going to participate in. Nice. And we're also, I'm collaborating with Shannon Miller out in Iowa and her students and a few students around the country, a few schools around the country are going to be part of this too. So we've got something going on right now with um, some connections with Pixar. We may have a Disney speaker who's going to come on and just talk to us, to, just Skype in with us and talk about character development and story, you know, really effective storytelling um, yeah. and kind of building tension in your, in your film. Nice. So that's what I'm really excited nice. about. All right, last question. One thing that you, one piece of advice you'd give either new teachers and or teachers that have been doing this for a while to, to get them to that next level. Don't buy a 3D printer until your third year. <laughs> I like. Honestly, I, no? I, I think there's a lot of pressure for for new steam spaces, you know, and it's easy to just plop a $1,200 on uh, an Ultimaker and think magic is going to happen. And the 3D printers require a great deal of time. They require almost a whole nother learning um, yeah. paradigm. And in order to use your 3D printer to do more than just simply create um, gizmos and you know kind of trinkets it really requires a mindset on both behalf of the teacher and of the students um, and I feel like that's something that can come later and every person I've ever interviewed about their maker spaces that's the one thing they said if they could have done it over they wouldn't have bought a 3d printer until their third year yeah so that's my yep. thank you that's good I, I kind of get an amen that's my advice too yeah it's it's um I mean paper and tape right it's a creativity process it's it's the design process. It's rapid prototyping. 3D printer is none of those at that point. Um, yeah. Can you use it for great things? Yeah, Jason was talking yesterday about game design and how he gave him 100 grams of 3D printer filament and they got to do that. But it is a, it can become a tangent and you've got to look at what is the why behind it and what is the, yeah. the rationale for 
them learning, spending so much time learning, you know, Tinkercad or whatever, or, or are they just downloading Thingiverse prints and, and yeah. what, where's the learning in there compared to this iterative process that you're discussing? So, yeah. Cool. Um, last thing, more information on, um, you, your book, what's your Twitter handle? Sure. So you can find me on Twitter. I'm Todd underscore Burleson. Um, there is, I have a webpage at toddburleson.com. And I just started a podcast with mm -hmm. my good friend, Dr. Jennifer Colito. Um, we had worked together for the last couple of years, and then she took a librarian position at a school not too far away. We wanted to make sure we were still collaborating throughout the year. And so nice. we have been interviewing other school librarians. We have got some authors um, lined up. We have about eight podcast editions right now in the can. Great. We're just releasing them every three days. So right. um, yeah, just a great way to like, keep conversation going across you know the country and even you know around the world we've got and where's that one found so it is called the jiffy pop podcast jiffy pop podcast. And jiffy pop podcast if you just search that you'll find it we okay. live on anchor so that the anchor platform but okay. we also are available on stitcher and apple itunes and all of those other things but just the jiffy pop podcast great well, Todd, this has been awesome. I've, I, I've just been enjoying our conversation and that's kind of the whole thing about these. And, um, you know, as you're doing podcasts too, it's just fun to talk to people that are, that are in the same world that you are and, um, you know, just hang out. Like I said, I kind of lurk on Twitter with you and sometimes I'm not, I'm not going to be, you know, just jumping in, chiming into things, but, but know that you're being watched and it's a good thing. Oh. <laughs> so no, no, that's a good thing, but I really enjoy you. And, um, yeah, lots of great collaboration here. So I appreciate you uh, driving not 100 miles an hour, as you said earlier, but, but I'm oh, sure you were not. just just a little bit over speed limit to get here um, to do this uh, with us today. And I'll be putting this uh, on, well, it's already on Facebook right now. It's live. It's about two minutes delayed. So you could watch yourself again, kind of like in. Oh, yeah. fine. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> when we close out here. So anyway, thanks so much. Um, I'm going to be putting some more resources out on Year in the Making. And uh Thanks, Todd, for coming. I'm going to close this down. And, Thank you. Uh, Thanks for the chance. Yeah, you bet. I'm going to turn this off on Facebook, and then uh, I'll say goodbye to you officially, too. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>